Hello everyone! Today we're reading a story about Pinocchio. Pinocchio, a real boy. This is Pinocchio. Let's read a story about him. The sun was just beginning to rise over Pinocchio's little village. The moment he awoke, Pinocchio leapt out of bed and ran to look at himself in the mirror. <laughs> look at this! He laughed with joy when he saw his reflection. It hadn't been a dream. The blue fairy had made him a real boy. Pinocchio lost track of the minutes as he stared at his reflection. He might have stood there all day if he hadn't smelled a wonderful scent coming from the kitchen. As he sniffed in the air, Pinocchio felt a strange sensation. His mouth began to water. Is this what being hungry feels like, he wondered. Pinocchio put on his clothes and ran to the kitchen. There he saw his father Geppetto cooking a huge breakfast. There were eggs and pancakes and bacon and sausages and oatmeal and orange juice and toast and milk and muffins and... <gasps> Pinocchio stopped trying to name everything on the table. Geppetto grinned when he saw Pinocchio. I wanted to cook something special for your first breakfast, but I couldn't decide what to make, he said. So I made everything. Pinocchio's stomach rumbled as he looked at all the food. Well, come on, Geppetto said, dig in. Pinocchio sat down and tried a bite of eggs. It's fluffy, he said, his mouth full. And soft and delicious, Pinocchio tried a little bit of all the food Geppetto had made. Every bite tasted different from the last. You see how happy he is. This is wonderful, Pinocchio said. Can we eat all day long? Oh no, Geppetto laughed. We'll be much too busy for that. I have so much to show you. Can we take the food with us? Pinocchio asked. That's an excellent idea, Geppetto said. We'll have a picnic. Geppetto packed up a lunch and he and Pinocchio left to explore the village. The first thing Pinocchio noticed was how brightly the sun shone. He blinked as he left the dark cottage and walked into the sunshine. The dazzling beams felt warm against his skin. He quickly discovered that stepping into the long shadows of the buildings cooled him down again. Pinocchio and Geppetto made a game of running in and out of the shadows all the way to the edge of town. When Pinocchio jumped through the last shadow, he felt a strange sensation in his stomach. It was different from hunger. It was... He... Pinocchio's tummy flip-flopped and a strange sound came from his throat. What... He is going on? Pinocchio asked. He was starting to get scared. Don't worry, Geppetto said. It's just the hiccups. Hiccups? Pinocchio asked. Will, will they ever be hi stop? Geppetto showed Pinocchio how to hold his breath until the hiccups went away. Pinocchio wasn't sure he liked this new experience. He had been so busy thinking about how much fun being a real boy was. He hadn't stopped to think about all the things that could go wrong. Pinocchio grew silent as he followed Geppetto. His mind was filled with questions, but he wasn't sure how to ask many of them. At first, the sun's warmth had felt nice, but now Pinocchio was hot and sweaty. His feet hurt, and his stomach felt as empty as it had that morning before breakfast. Pinocchio finally asked the question that uh, he was most concerned about. Are we there yet? Geppetto took Pinocchio's hand. It's just over the hill. The pair climbed higher until they saw a beautiful valley below them. Race you to the swimming hole? Geppetto asked. Pinocchio nodded and ran off before Geppetto was even prepared. Father and son ran down the hill and collapsed in a happy pile next to the lake sage. Time for food, Pinocchio cheered. Geppetto laughed and began unpacking the picnic basket. 
Geppetto and Pinocchio spent the rest of the day at the swimming hole, playing in the water and fishing on the bank. As they played, Geppetto told Pinocchio stories of the many times he had visited the lake as a young boy. Pinocchio felt much better now that he had eaten and rested. The cool water was refreshing after their long walk from the village. Even when Pinocchio scrapped his knee on one of the willow trees, he didn't get upset. He was starting to realize what an exciting place the world was. As the sun began to set, Pinocchio noticed a new feeling. His eyelids felt heavy, as though he could barely keep his eyes open. Then he yawned. I'm tired, Pinocchio said, surprised at the realization. You've had quite a big day, Geppetto said. Are you ready to go home? Pinocchio nodded, and Geppetto lifted him onto his shoulders. He carried Pinocchio towards their little house in the village. Sitting on Geppetto's back, Pinocchio looked up into the sky. Far above them shone the wishing star, twinkling brightly. Pinocchio realized that being a real boy was more complicated than he had imagined. Today was fun, Father, Pinocchio said, but it was hard too. Geppetto nodded, thinking about what Pinocchio had said. That's what being alive is. It's sunlight and bacon and hiccups and scraped knees. Some of it will be scary, but I promise I'll be right there with you. Geppetto waited for Pinocchio to answer, but all he heard was the sound of soft snoring. Pinocchio was fast asleep. Geppetto laughed quietly. Enough speeches. It's time to get you to bed. Geppetto carried Pinocchio as gently as he could to bed. He fluffed each pillow and then let his son snuggle down on the sheets. Good night, my boy, Geppetto said, leaning in to kiss Pinocchio on the forehead. Today was a dream come true. I can't wait to share another adventure with you tomorrow. The end. It's the end of the story. And this is the book. It's really great. Okay, did you like the story today? I liked it so much. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.